Hey, Tim Schutz here again with C4D Training. Today I have a tutorial on using NetRender. If you're going to be rendering a large scene or even a large image, perhaps with global illumination, NetRender will be a huge help. NetRender enables you to use whatever machines you have on your network at home or in your office to help you render your image. So if you're doing a scene, it will split it up into frames and send each frame off to a different computer to render and it will completely manage this for you so you don't have to do anything you just upload your file to the net render server and hit start and it will go and render each of the each of the files if something were to happen to one of the machines say it was to crash net render will take care of managing those frames and moving them to another machine for render so it will know that machine went offline and switch the frames that it had assigned to that machine to another machine. So I'm going to get started here showing you how to install it, and get it set up, and actually render a job both for a scene and a still image. So here we see the setup from the Cinema 4D installation disk. I've just run the, the, the general installation. That's where you'll do everything from. And so I've already, I already have my Cinema 4D installed, and I also have my server and my client install, but I'm going to show you how to do that from here. So if I click on continue, we'll see the information, our registration information with our serial numbers here, which I've blocked out to protect my serial numbers. And if I go ahead and hit continue, it will ask me what do I want to install. Well, I don't want to install Cinema 4D unless it's not installed, but I want to go ahead and install, to start with, the NetRender server. I'm going to hit continue. It'll give me the choice and it'll say, okay, you want to install the application and these other things here. So then I would just go ahead and hit install and it would go ahead and install that for me. It would ask me for a, a directory to put it in and then install it. So then after that finishes, I need to come back and run the setup again and go ahead and install my NetRender client on any of the machines that I want to use as a client. Now, just to clarify, the server doesn't have to run on your fastest machine because it doesn't really require a whole lot of processing power for it to manage the render. So you can put that on any machine and then you can put your clients on the machines on your network that you want to use. You can also add a client to the machine that the server is on so that one machine can act as both server and a client giving you another rendering machine. So then after you have your NetRender client installed, you're ready to get started to set up the server and the client. And I'm, I'll show you how to do that now. So when you first start your server, it will come up and it'll look like this and it says, welcome to C4D Net. And it tells you when the server was started and what the address of the server is. So one thing that you'll need to set up is you'll come up here to file and you'll go to network settings. And you'll select a data path and that's the path to where it will render your final images and you can set that different for each project if you want to and then you need to enter in the TCP IP address for the machine that the server is running on so my machine is running on 192.168.1.3 and so if you've got a home network you just check to see what the IP address is of your machine and you enter it here and then you have this port, and that's the port that the server will run on in a web browser. And I'll show you that in a second. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. And then in order to make those changes effective, you have to quit out and restart. So I'm going to go ahead and quit out of that. And then I'm going to go ahead and start the client while I'm here. Okay, so here we are, and you can see here it says Cinema 4D Net Client, and it's welcome to C4D Net. Client started on port 1080, no server selected, and that's because we need to set up in here our network settings as well. So we bring our network settings over here, and now we add the IP address of our server. So if this client were running on another machine, or even if it's running on the same machine, I enter the same IP address here that I entered for my server and you'll do that on each client. You'll go to each client and you'll enter in 
that one IP address. So again, mine was 192.168.1.3. Okay, and so then I just go ahead and hit OK. One thing you do want to make sure of here is that this server port matches the same server port that was assigned in the actual server. Okay, go ahead and OK. And again, in order to make these changes effective, we have to quit out and restart. So I'm going to go ahead and quit. So now I'll go ahead and restart my server. All right, so here's my server, and it says again, you know, welcome to C4Dnet. Server started at, and it's my address, 192.168.1.3, colon, 8080. I'm going to go ahead and make this guy a little bit smaller, and I'm going to go ahead and start my client. Okay, so now here's my client. Welcome to C4Dnet. Client started on port 1080. Selected server, 192.168.1.3. 8080 connection to server established at so that means that this client is now attached to the server and if I were to start running a job it would use this client to start rendering I put together this scene here to render in net render so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the settings so if I come up here I've got I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my ambient occlusion depth of field and global illumination and on my global illumination I'm gonna set some of my stuff a little bit higher so that's going to take it quite a while to render with all this stuff on it. So each frame is going to take a little while. So this is a perfect sort of situation for net render. And let's take a look at our output, make sure everything's right. So I'm going to go ahead and do all frames here. And my width and height are right. I'm going to do NTSC D1 widescreen square pixel. If I go to my save tab, under where we would normally enter a file, I'm not going to go ahead and enter anything because NetRender is going to take care of its location for us. And I'm just going to go ahead and render as a JPEG sequence. So normally I would render off as a QuickTime movie maybe, or if you really want some high quality images, you could do TIFF. I'm going to save some space and just do some JPEG sequences. When you use NetRender, it's best to use image sequences. And that way it can send a single frame off to each computer to render and then it will bring them all back into a folder and then you can bring those in as an image sequence into After Effects. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And the last thing I want to do before I set this up for net render is I want to make sure that all of my textures and everything that I'm using are all in with my file so that it doesn't lose them or it can't find them when it's sending it off to net render. So if I go up here and I say File, and I say Save Project, it'll ask me where I want to save this. And what that will do is it will collect all of the textures and everything and put it into a folder. So you'll have your, your main folder with your Cinema 4D file, and also in that folder will be a textures folder with any external textures that you might have used. And that way when it's sending it to the different machines, all of your textures will be there and it can access them. All right, so here we are. I've got my net server and my net client set up on this machine. And as you can see here in my net server, I actually have three clients. See how it says new client, new client, new client, and it, it detects them as each one is started. So I have a client running on this machine, which is this one here, and then I have it on two other machines, one of which is a Mac. So I have two PCs and one Mac net rendering for me. All right, so now to get to where we can load up our project. So I just open up a browser here, and in my browser, I enter in the IP address of the server. So in my case, that's 192.168.1.3. And then I add colon 8080, because that's the port that I am running it on. Then you'll see the Cinema 4D net render interface show up. And so we just click on enter. So in order to create a job, we give it a name. And so I'm just gonna call this test job. And then I say create new job. And so now I've created this new job which doesn't have anything in it yet. I can click on test job and I have no files here in my project files. So I can go ahead and upload and browse to my file. And here's my file building that I'm gonna use for this. And I hit open. 
and then I just hit upload and then and then I have my building.c4d project file listed in there. So now I can go back to my jobs list and here's test job and I can click on start. And so now it's starting to render the job and it's spreading out the files to each of the computers. So if I go over here and click on clients, you can see that I have my three computers here listed one, two, and three, and each one is assigned a series of frames. This machine's going to do frame 0 through 30. This machine's going to do 31 through 60. And this machine's going to do frame 61 to 90. And what will happen is if one machine finishes its frames first, it will pull some frames from one of the other machines to help finish the rendering faster. So all the machines will always be used as long as possible until you get to the last couple of frames and then you know if there's only one one or two frames left then you'll have one or two of your machines working on it. And if we switch back to look at our server and our client on this machine you can see here this indicates that it had started rendering the file at a certain time and then it's telling you which frame it's currently rendering. So right now it's currently rendering frame 61. And when it finishes with that frame, it'll start rendering 62, 63, 64, etc. until it finishes its allotted frames. And like I said, if there's frames left on one of the other machines, it will pull those and start rendering those to help out. So the nice thing about the net render with Cinema 4D is that everything is managed by the net render server. You don't have to do anything. And as you can see here, these are the results from my first project, the Building Fly project. And so I go ahead and preview these. So as we preview these, you can see it's doing a series of frames. And then all I have to do is import those into After Effects as an image sequence. So back here in the job section of NetRender, I'm going to go ahead and stop the test project and start my building fly project. Again, if I click on clients, I can go and see I actually stopped one of my clients. And so now we have these two clients here. What will happen is it'll tell you which frame it's working on, which frames it still has to do. And it, when it renders the image, it'll put a little thumbnail here so that you can see it. And as you can see here, the way this was set up was that the first machine had 1 through 30, the second machine had 30 through 60, and the third machine had 60 through 90, and one of my machines had finished pretty much 60 through 90, or 61 through 90, and so now they've divided these up between the two machines to finish the rendering. Okay, so next up I'm going to show you how to render a single frame across NetRender. So if you had a big city scene or something and you were using a lot of global illumination and ambient occlusion and depth of field and caustics and all that kind of thing, it might take a really long time for a single frame to render. So you can actually save yourself some time by setting it up to render across NetRender. So to show you what this image will look like when we're done, I'll go ahead and render it really quickly. And this renders fairly fast, but I just wanted to set up a simple example to use so you can kind of see. So this is what it should look like when we're done. So the way you do this is you set up a camera in your scene and make sure you get it set the way you want it. And you know, basically this is the image that I want to render off. And I'm going to go ahead and spread this window out a little bit here so you can see when I load this. So here I am in objects, I'm going to go file, load object preset, cinema 4D, expressions, and then I'm going to come down to this tiled camera here. So that adds a tiled camera to our scene, so I can go ahead and drag this back over now. And notice our tiled camera has a little Espresso node tag on it. So this is set up, if I click on this, and I come down to the user data tab, I have a couple of things here. I have tiles per axis, so X and Y axis. So it's, this is going to determine how many tiles we're going to get. 
So if we have two, we'll get a total of four tiles. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this up to four. So we'll get 16 tiles, four by four. If I go ahead and turn on my tiled camera, my tiled camera is in the center of my scene. It's where it goes by default. And that's not really where I want it. And, you know, I've already set up my camera and everything's ready to go. So if I turn that off, if I come down here to reference camera, if I grab my other camera that I set up and I drag that in there, it will use my reference camera as its settings. So now if I turn on the tiled camera, I can see that it stays where the original camera was. So then also down here, we have this use tiling. It's very important that you check that on. And notice when I check that on, my camera view changes. And that's because it's showing me the first tile. So another thing that we need to change to make sure that this works for us, we gotta come up here to our render settings and under the output tab where we have the frame range, currently it's set to current frame by default. We wanna go ahead and render from 0 to 15. And the reason we're doing 0 to 15 is because we have 16 tiles, right? I selected 4 over here, so we have 4 by 4, so 16, and we want to render from frame 0 to 15, so that'll be a total of 16 frames. This isn't really an animation, but we need to render those off, and what it's going to do is it's going to render those as individual images, which then we can take into Photoshop and put back together. So I'll go ahead and close this. And now again, because we're going to be using Net Render, we want to go ahead and save our project. So we come up here to File and come down to Save Project. And then I give a name that I want to call this. It'll create a folder with the C4D file in it and a texture folder. So I'm going to call this Tiled Image. Save. And so now we should have our folder all set up. Here we are in the Net Render web app. And you can see here's the two jobs that I had previously. And I could come in here and I could say create new job and I could do the upload thing, but I want to go ahead and show you the other way to load files into the NetRender server. So here's my file, tiled image. If I open that up, you can see here's my C4D file. And I didn't use any external textures, so it didn't need to create a texture folder. Go back. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And when I set up my NetRender server, I selected a location for it to render my files to, and this was the location I selected. So it created this folder called User. When I open User, it'll create a folder for each user on the system. So I'm the administrator, so it went ahead and created an administrator folder for me. So I open that up, and here's my previous two jobs. So I'm going to go ahead now and paste this new job in here. And now we'll go back to the web app and if I refresh this there's my tiled image so that's just another way that you can load your projects in it's kinda of six one half dozen the other so I'm gonna go ahead and start this and I'm gonna click over to my clients and I currently have two clients running and so it's scheduled the first one to do frame 0 to 7 and the second one to do frame 8 through 15 and so now you can see that it's done the first frame and you can see that's not my entire image. Remember I had that glowing sphere. So this has created the first tile. All right, and now we can see that it's finished when it has my job listed, but then my clients say that they're waiting and there's nothing in any of the, the boxes here. That means that it's completed. So if I take a look in my results folder here, I can see that I have images zero, through 15. And if I go ahead and view those in the picture viewer, I can see that it is indeed the pieces of my image tiled. So then all I would need to do is take that into Photoshop and put them back together. You need to remember the size that you set it to render out. So I rendered mine out at 1024 by 768, so I would create a new image in Photoshop, 1024 by 768, and then I would open each of these and kind of put them together like a jigsaw puzzle. And then you'd have your, your image. And it will certainly save you time with a really large, detailed still image. Something else I'd like to recommend, if you're going to be using NetRender and you have some machines around that you want to put the client on, 
I'd recommend making a shortcut of the client and dropping that in the startup folder on those machines. So that way you know when you start the machine that the client is automatically running. You don't have to worry about going around and starting them all. And then you can verify that they're running but when you turn on the server because it will make connection to each of the clients. NetRender is a really powerful tool that's included with the Studio Bundle of Cinema 4D. And if you have unlimited clients, you can put it on any machine, like I said, either in your office or in your home that's on your network, and use it. And even if it only renders a single frame overnight, it's still an additional frame that got rendered and saves you a little bit of time. One caveat when you're using a Macintosh system, if you're using kind of a mixture of Macintosh and PC, you need to make sure that you set things up properly. Naming convention wise, you should limit your names to 32 characters and not use any special characters. Just think of it as if you were doing something for the web, you wouldn't use any spaces or special characters. If you need a space, you can use an, uh, an underscore. If you are using movies for your textures, instead of using a QuickTime or an AVI, which might have a problem on one platform or the other, it's better to go ahead and use image sequences for your textures. Again, I hope you found that helpful. I'm Tim Schetz, C4D Training. Thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.